Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 3 In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the P06 Burst Sniper Rifle, and I'm going to admit I kind of like this weapon a little bit. I think it's just because it's trolly, or it's goofy, or it's unique. I really hated this weapon in the beta. I thought it was terrible handling, terrible performance, and I expected to really hate doing the In-Depth episode on it, but I didn't have a hard time getting gameplay at all and found it kind of fun to use, if not somewhat difficult. So I'm going to talk about all of its very unusual statistics, especially the burst fire nature. Nature, and we'll start off with the damage. It'll deal 90 damage per shot, which is very high if you consider the fact that it pull, that it fires three times each time you pull the trigger. So that is 90, not total, but 90 per each one of the three shots. So times three, that would be 270 damage every time you pull the trigger, which depending on how you want to count, could make it the highest base damage sniper rifle in the game. The damage is very, very high. That makes it very good at shooting down score streaks, at wall banging, or just pumping out damage all over the place. The one-shot kill areas are anywhere if two of your three shots hit, which, you know, you pull the trigger once and it doesn't kick that much, so very realistically it's not that hard to get two shots. Even if it's two shots to the foot it kills, oftentimes you'll even hit three, which is complete overkill. However, even though that it can kill anywhere in two shots, it can still one-shot kill to the head, neck, or shoulders, just in case you're swipe sniping, in case you're hip firing, in case you miss, or in case you're wall banging and dealing decrease damage. We do have multipliers on the head, neck, and shoulders. So the overall damage output on your body if you hit is absurdly high. Like you could just, you could dump truck somebody running the kinetic armor. You could just shred somebody that has the ball and uplink. Extremely, extremely high damage on this sniper rifle. The burst rate of fire is 600 rounds per minute. This is essentially light machine gun speed. It's almost the same as the Razorback. It's the same as the MR6 if you're firing it as fast as you possibly can. It seems like it's shooting a little bit faster. That's just because it's a burst weapon and because we have to wait for that build up and that oomph and we associate burst weapons with being really fast. But the rate of fire of the burst is actually a little bit slow making it very possible for you to miss people. And the burst delay is quite long as well at 700 milliseconds. So it's almost an entire second between bursts, which means it's a very slow firing weapon overall if you consider one trigger pull one fire if that's how you want to think about it and unfortunately it's not a charge and hold you have to pull the trigger preemptively and it will kind of charge up and go zzzz and then fire and you can even see it animate there on its default scope so it is very very difficult to hit people with and the rate of fire and all of those unusual properties are by far the most limiting factor of this sniper rifle thankfully the po6 does have a small amount of aim assist. It's very similar to the to the Dracon in that respect. It, you know, it has a little bit of sticky aim, has a little bit of aim assist, not a ton. It won't feel like it, and a lot of you may, you know, not notice it. I certainly didn't notice it, but it is there, mathematically speaking, and if I want to get really meticulous, I can test for it. Just wanted to throw that little fact out there. The recoil is low enough to work, right? The recoil, it does kick a little bit. Uh, usually two out of the three shots are pretty much spot on. The third one might go a little bit screwball. It shakes the screen a little bit. It makes a unique noise, but very, overall very low. By the time you're ready for your second shot, you should have no trouble whatsoever reacquiring the target. It really shouldn't be an issue. And if it were on a different gun, maybe an issue, but not for this one in particular. Aim down sights time is 366 milliseconds, which is average for the class. Nothing really special about that, just kind of average for sniper rifles. It has a wide hip fire spread, but is overall very spammable, considering the fact that you only need two of the three shots to kill, and that it does spray, and that you can even get one shot kills if you get lucky and hit somebody in the head, neck, or shoulders. The hip firing isn't too bad, like I would actually recommend doing this if you're in a pinch, especially if you're able to go prone or crouch, you'll probably be able to dump truck somebody with an unexpected hip fire. And I think the default scope is by far the best. Don't get me wrong, I love the barrack scope, I like the recon scope, the other ones are quite nice, but the default scope has a unique animation that shows you the charge time on the sniper rifle. It helps you aim, it helps you time your shots, it helps you know when you are and aren't going to be able to hit your shots, so I think the default scope is just by far the best on the PO6, and I wouldn't say that for all sniper rifles, but definitely on this one. However, if you don't want to run the default scope, go with a low zoom optic, recon, elo, varix, whatever you want, and kind of use it more like a DMR and less like a proper sniper. Magazine size is 15, extended mags will take you up to 21 one and that's kind of small because if you think about it that means you can only shoot five times before you have to reload and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you I had to reload this gun like crazy I felt like I was always reloading this gun just 
I, I spammed with it a lot. It's hard to hit with because of the delay. You're gonna have to re like if I kill two people, it's like all right, my job's done. It's time for me to reload. Thankfully, the reload time is very fast at 2.9 seconds, fastest in the sniper rifle class. Thank you, Treyarch. So it's uh not so bad there. You won't spend your whole time reloading, and it has moderate idle sway. It has what I would call average idle sway amongst all the sniper rifles in the game. Not too high, not too low, but you will notice it, and you're going to need to hold your breath for long ranges. It also has a wide high wall penetration factor and it is very very easy to wall bang with even easier than most of the other sniper rifles because it'll follow up with three shots and whereas like the locust or whatever you might have to shoot and then rebolt and shoot again to get a kill this one usually just one shot wall bangs people pretty easily especially if you hit them chest up not a problem at all the limiting factor of this sniper rifle is that it is very hard to use because of the delayed fire. It does not shoot when you pull the trigger. It shoots after you pull the trigger. You pull the trigger and you hear it charge and go zzzm and then it fires. And that's a very, very awkward mechanic. I thought if a charge and hold would be better. Sniper rifles are all about getting picks, right? Somebody makes a mistake and shows their head for a millisecond. Bam. They cross a choke point. Bam. You got like a very narrow margin of time to hit somebody. But this one, you use that entire narrow margin charging your stupid shot. And then instead of, especially in a game with very low sniper rifle auto aim, you kind of have to wait for somebody to walk across your crosshairs and click or pull the trigger just the right second to pop them. And with this weapon, you have to track them the entire time or hope that they're sitting still or kind of line your shot up and that makes it very very difficult to use way harder to use than it should be but if you can deal with that it's kind of fun because it's a pure damage pump like it is very uh, it's very fun, right? The damage is very high. If you do line your shots up, you dump truck people. Even doesn't really matter where you hit them. You can knock kill streaks out of the air like it's nothing. You can wall bang like it's nothing. You can treat the gun like a DMR and spam it. It's impressive. It's scary. Everybody knows it can kill you quickly, so they have a tendency to avoid you. And it is very, very rewarding when you do kill people, but it's just very hard to use. I'm never going to tell you that this is a good gun for competitive. This isn't really even that good of a gun for pubs if you really want to win, but it is a very fun weapon. It is usable and it's very fun. It's very satisfying when you hit people with it and I think that's what I really liked about it and that's kind of, I would just recommend to use this weapon if you want to have fun and I think it's best with just a suppressor and maybe a stock if you need it. The suppressor is essential because it keeps you off the radar and it has no negative side effects. Default scope is going to be best. Ballistic CPU, I didn't need that much on this particular weapon and just maybe a stock. Maybe if you have a little bit of sidestepping difficulties, rock the stock on it and you'll you'll feel a little bit better about yourself. Well, guys, that's all for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. The previous episode was on the Locust Sniper Rifle, and the next episode, we're going to be rounding sniper rifles out with the big boy SVG-100. Drifter out.